بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ربي اكتبنا منهم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله it's, a, it's an honor to be here today with all of you and our, uh, and our beloved teachers. And I just wanted to take a few moments to remind myself and to share with you some verses from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where God Most High heard the pain of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of the believers who are close to him. Because as everyone sitting in this room knows, the words, the taunts directed at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hurt everyone in the community. And I wanted to begin with Surah Al-Qalam where God revealed Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Noon Wal Qalami wa ma yasturun Noon the single beautiful arabic letter by the pen by all they write and our scholars have taught us that there are multiple interpretations for this it could be all that was written about the Prophet وسلم, about the nascent Muslim community, and it could also be about what the angels were recording about what was being said at that time. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ You, Prophet, are not, by receiving God's grace and through God's grace, a madman. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ You will have a never-ending reward. And see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs us to the focus. Not the here, not the now, not what we have to put up with. Right? The sabr where we need to go, where we keep our eyes on meeting our Lord, and join in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa innaka laala khuluqin azim. Allah, look at these beautiful words where Allah subhanahu wa taala is affirming and teaching us about the noble character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Truly, you have a strong character. Truly, you have a noble, tremendous character. And we see this throughout the life of the Prophet ﷺ, right? Not just through the taunts, but even on the battlefield when the Prophet ﷺ is bleeding. And what is he trying to do? All of us know these stories. He's trying to prevent his own blood from touching the ground. Why? Out of fear that Allah will curse his own people. And what does he say? Does he respond to the requests of people urging them to curse those who fought the Prophet with their hands, with their tongues. No, he prayed for their forgiveness because, what did he say? Forgive my people. Oh God, forgive my people because they do not know. And subhanAllah, think if we adopt an, this attitude of the Prophet وسلم, and emulate him, we live in this country among our people. Muslims, non-Muslims in this country are our people. And we owe it to share the blessings we have been given by God to those who live among us. And it might, even if it's only through demonstration, of good character. 
even if it's the saying of a good word. Soon you will see as they will. Which of you is afflicted with madness? Inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu biman dalla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadin. Your Lord knows best who strays from his path and who is rightly guided. None of us need to prove. I want to say anything. This is not our burden. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of his religion. And the question is, will we become worthy conduits of it? Will we have the spiritual backbone, as Sheikh Hassan was teaching us, to face adversity with inner strength, with inner purity? Will we become like Imam al-Shafi'i used to say, when people light the fires beneath us, will we become fragrant incense that they smell and admire and are drawn to? Can we be like the tree when rocks are thrown at it, that fruits fall and nourish those around it? People, birds, the environment, enriching the earth again. Can we become sustainers of our communities? And just to remind you of, of some of the, um, just how painful these taunts were, just to, God doesn't shy from taking and reminding us of what was said to the Prophet. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah recounts to us, بَلْ قَالُوا أَدْغَاثُ أَحْلَامُ بَلْ افْتَرَاهُ بَلْ هُوَ شَعِرٌ فَلْيَأْتِ بِآيَا كَمَا أُرْسِلَ الْأَوَّلُونَ Right? All of the different narratives that are strung together, which one will stick? Some say, muddled dreams. Others, he has made it up. Yet others, he is just a poet. Let him show us a sign as previous messengers did. And we know from the seerah of our Prophet wasallam, how these were carefully orchestrated narratives, right? We know that the charge of poetry was meant to remove the divine revelation, to say that it was just another man, just another series of words, no real impact, nothing that we should pay attention to. We know how when they accused him of being a sorcerer, of being a magician, because they thought this would be an effective way to scare people, right? He's dividing families from one another. Isn't that magic? How could somebody infiltrate into the homes? All of these scare tactics. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in speaking to the Prophet and teaching us through his guidance also said in Surah At-Tur, These are verses 29 to 31. أَمْ يَقُولُونَ شَاعِرٌ نَتَرَبَّصُ بِهِ رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ بَلْ تَرَبَّصُ فَإِنِّي Oh, sorry, I actually wanted to start the verse before. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to teach, to remind, to remind each of us of our origins and our destination. فَذَكِّرْ فَمَا أَنْتَ بِنَعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِكَاهِنٍ وَلَا مَجْنُونٍ أَمْ يَقُولُونَ شَاعِرٌ نَتَرَبَّصُ بِهِ رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ بَلْ تَرَبَّصُوا 
فإني معكم من المتربصين. Again, so Prophet, remind people, by the grace of your Lord, you are neither oracle nor madman. If they say he is only a prophet, we shall await his fate. Say, wait if you wish. I too am waiting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Most High, called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of us to the most noble and excellent of character. And I'll just wanted to mention some of these verses from Surah Al-A'raf. خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وعرض عن الجاهلين. Be tolerant and command what is right and pay no attention to those who are ignorant. And when these verses were revealed to the Prophet wasallam, it is narrated that he asked Jibreel to interpret it for him. And Jibreel told him, wait until I ask. He left and came back and said, O oh Muhammad, God commands you to maintain ties with those who cut you off, to give to those who refuse to give to you, and to pardon those who are unjust to you. And I had wanted to share more anecdotes from the life of the Prophet وسلم, and his progeny who embodied this message. But I'll just close with a couple more reminders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassured the Prophet وسلم, through the stories of those prophets who came before him. Right? فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُو الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Have patience and persevere the way those prophets of great determination did before you. And this door is open to us as well. And I'll close with this verse from Surah Ashura. وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ If a person is patient and forgives, this is one of the greatest things. And it's easy for us to throw these words out, to think about patience and forgiveness, to think of them theoretically. But when we're faced with hateful rhetoric, can we move beyond the ignorance? Can we maintain our inner core? Can we maintain generosity? Can we continue to smile? Because those moments of interaction are another way of us reversing the narrative. One of, subhanAllah, when they look at these, the statistics of negative attitudes toward Muslim, you know, the one factor that is a determinant if somebody does not have a negative attitude towards Muslims is if they actually know and have interacted with a Muslim. So this is an obligation upon all of us. Not all of us have the capability to enter the media, to become journalists, to create music that is uplifting, to create all sorts of, subhanAllah, the gifts you've been given, use them. But at the very least, all of us should be interacting with our neighbors in ways that they will look at us, they will look at our children, and they will hold all of us in greatest respect. Um, and so I just want one thing for us to take away. Again, all of our neighbors should know who we are. All of our neighbors should know that they can come to us. All of our neighbors should know that they can trust us and depend on us and rely on us. So let's all make our intentions, inshallah, to have even just one small gesture to reach out to those who are closest to us with our families.